leaving the Mountain Gap store, my pack is heavy. And this is the Raven Cliffs Wilderness. Believe it or not, the fog has actually lifted some. It's no longer raining or dripping out of the trees. But this is one wet trail today. The top of Loveland Mountain has a little bald that's what that we're in. It's also supposed to have a view, but not much of a view today. Except that I think the fog may be lifting even more. I was sure I was on the wrong trail. That's the first blaze I've seen in half a mile. Wow. This has got a blaze on both sides of the tree. Makes you tired. Let's bury it. Put a rock over it. Here's a nice view. Really nice. It's cleared off today finally. This is a great view. And worth the wait. So when I got here there was no fog and now it's rolling in. And this is night number three. You can actually see the clouds rolling in in the valley. The view from this campsite is pretty spectacular. It's 8.44 Eastern Time and I'm starting out uh, on day four after night number three. Pleasant night by myself. Plan to make about 14 and a half or 15 miles to the Blue Hole Shelter. Looks like more of an altar than a fire ring. Well, it's a big one. This is Tessanati Gap, I believe. From this gap, Tessanati, the, the uh, trail goes up Wildcat Mountain, about 500 feet climb. So we pick up the Raven Cliffs Wilderness again. And it's a tough 500 feet with steep switchbacks to get up here and see this on top of Wildcat Mountain. So here's Whitley Gap Shelter Road, which is about our trail, which is about 1.2 miles, they say here. Somebody left uh, trail magic, I guess you'd call it. Maybe it was just they brought too much. This is Hogpen Gap. This is the Mark Trail Wilderness. I just passed an old gentleman hiking in a kilt. No kidding, a skirt. This is right at the halfway point between Springer Mountain and Deep Gap. Look at the stonework on this trail. If you want to see change in leaves, now's the time. But they're littering the ground and covering the trees and all the varying shades of fall and it's really pretty here. Here the trail takes on the tunnel look like it does in so much of North Carolina. You feel like you're hiking through a tunnel. So I get to end the day with a rock garden. It's always exciting. Rocks, rocks, and more rocks. And there's the sign for the Blue Mountain Shelter. So Mountain Shelter from up close. Here it is, just me and all my mice friends. So I'm off on what amounts to day five, going east into the sunset, up Blue Mountain, another 100 feet to the top of Blue Mountain, and then down to Unicoi Gap before long, which is about a thousand feet down. The sunrise is beautiful on Blue Mountain. So far the downhill to Unicoi Gap is uh, smooth and easy. It's downhill all right but it's not straight down. The trail here is a little creek. The view is pretty down here near the bottom of Unicoi Gap. Leaves are slowly falling and the trail's rocky. Blue Mountain's pretty, but it's mighty rocky.
Here we are at Unicorn Gap, and the, the thousand foot down, downhill was about as good as you can make it. Hog pen yesterday, the two guys in the shelter and me said somebody was doing trail magic. They had fresh fruit and hamburgers. I'm sorry I missed that. Actually, the climb was 1,100 feet in a mile. So 5,280 feet forward, we went up 1,100 feet uh, to the top of this Rocky Mountain. We're gonna lose the 1,000 feet we gained and start back at about the same altitude of Unicoi Gap. This time it'll be at Indian Grave Gap. Look at the work that went into the trail here. I mean, somebody really spent a lot of time working on this trail. And it's really good downhill, safer than just rocks. So here we are at Indian Grave Gap after a thousand foot descent. This might be the best trail magic, even though food would be really nice because this water is needed. There's water around. Somebody's just really nice to put it out here for us like this. So I think I'm going to get some. Train Gap even has a forest service road. It's also got the Appalachian Trail here. And so that's the way I'll go. So here's the Trey Mountain Shelter Trail. And it's 4.7 miles to the next shelter. And that's where I'm planning on being tonight. This has been a tough eight and a half miles today. Tough. Three hills we've climbed high into the 400s, I mean 4,000s. This, this tr shelter is uh, still pretty high. Mushrooms add color to the woods. I think this is Sassafras Gap. Well, this is Addis Gap, so the trail goes uh, 800 feet up now over a ridge and down the other side to the shelter. It's about a mile uh, up the hill for a thousand foot climb. So five to one. Um, if it weren't four o'clock in the afternoon, I might be excited about it. And then on the other side, there's a descent of five or 600 feet to the shelter. Forgive the heavy breathing. That's the fourth long climb I've had today. I believe I could have made it this morning earlier, but boy, that was tough. As I was climbing up the hill, I remembered four hours of football practice at W.S. Neal in South Alabama in August without water. And I knew that was worse than this hill. But I was also 17 at the time. I had a little more energy than I do now. But I believe we've crested this baby and we're heading down toward the shelter. I have to say, that is a wonderful sight. This is the Deep Gap, Georgia shelter. There's a Deep Gap, North Carolina where my truck is parked. This is not it. I am so glad to not be on the trail anymore today after four huge climbs and 16 miles. I'm finishing up the morning of the uh, sixth day and drinking my coffee and mixing grits and freeze-dried eggs and seeing if I can swallow that. Beautiful morning. I managed to get up at, uh, in time. It's 7.51 and if I want to I can get out of here by 8. We're heading for North Carolina today. This is the top of Powell Mountain. I sure am glad I didn't try to climb here yesterday. I'd be still lying beside the trail. So it's just 400 feet, but it's a wake up call early in the morning. So here I am, and headed down toward Moreland and Dix Creek Gaps. And then I'll have to recover about 2,000 feet slowly in North Carolina as we go up to the 4,000. Most of North Carolina's is higher than most of Georgia. 
it doesn't really matter how high the mountain is it's how deep the gap is that you start as far as the climb goes you can go to Tarmina, Sicily start at the beach at zero and climb a thousand feet to the city of Tarmino and then climb another thousand feet to the little city overlooking Tarmino called Castellio I think I could be mispronouncing that but anyway you've climbed half a mile and that is a tough half a mile but when you get to the top you're only about 2,000 feet from sea level so it's the it's the steepness of the climb and not how high you get until you get into altitudes that have low oxygen which we don't have any out here so this is Dick's Creek Gap coming up the last major road by the way in Georgia that I know of after this the trail goes into the woods and then into North Carolina <laughs> so Bly Gap is 8.7 miles and that is the North Carolina line. So here's Calvert Gap as we climb up now to Buzzard's Knob. Well we're gonna call this Buzzard's Knob. Who knows there's no signs. This means my day is about half over. This is Plum Orchard Gap and the shelter is right down there. It's a good ways to the shelter about two or three tenths of a mile so I'm not gonna visit that shelter. 7.3 miles to the next shelter so it'll take me till late afternoon as usual and then tomorrow I'll only have about four miles to go just crossed as knob as knob and uh, it's just another one of those little 400 foot climbs this forest has numbers of beautiful tall yellow poplars and they're beginning to turn giving the forest an autumn look here also there are a few more evergreens beginning to make their appearance as we go further north this is blue ridge gap and the only way i know it is is the map says it has a dirt road here's the way to the trail i'm pretty sure and someone has painted the sign you maybe can read it up close if it's engraved Nope, totally gone. My gap is 3.1 miles, which is the state line. The trail out of Georgia is a tunnel of Mount Laurels. Wow, what a pretty valley. You can hear the wind in the leaves and water in a little stream down the valley. The ground is covered with fallen leaves that almost look like a yellow brick road some places. I guess the pipe in the tree is the line. And then this is what you get. And if you're on the North Carolina side, this is what you get. Well, I hiked from Springer to North Carolina and I get a picture of a plaque. One guy said on the trail this time, if you hike all the way from Maine to Georgia, you get to take a picture of a little man. And that's what you get. But you also get something on your resume that says you finished what you started. And that is a great way to get and keep a job. Here's the gnarled old tree that people take pictures of. It's an oak. All right, the muskrat shelter is less than three miles but we had one of north carolina's favorite attractions of course in front of it and that is a bald so i've got about a 600 foot climb to get over the bald to the shelter 300 feet to go now this long straight away they're just fooling you you got up on the first mountain but there's usually a second one after a roughly flat half mile the trail starts getting ready to climb again and since we've dropped just a little bit this climb will probably be about 500 feet 
Well, about 200 feet to go. Well, I made the altitude. After all that climbing, this trail starts back down again. So, unless we climb something else, that was all there was to Courthouse Ball. Not many views. Here's the North Carolina version of Sassafras Gap. There's the Raven Rock Trail. Just past two, I guess, section hikers. But they smell mighty clean. Well, there's plenty of water. There's a shelter trail, hopefully. Once again, I'm so tired, I don't care if it's just full of people. And full of rats, too. I can bet you it's full of mice, I can tell you that. Last night, they were trying to load my pack up, and I had to put a stop to them. See all the mouse hanging strings to keep the mice from getting your pack? There wasn't one last night. So they were getting my pack. In fact, one of them had it on his back walking off when I stopped him. Humans are generally weird creatures. I'll take a picture of that in case. It... My legs don't, don't do well with all those climbs. All the rest of it's fine, but the climbing seems to really take it out of me lately. But I made it, and I've got about four miles to my truck. So. Well, I was joined last night by a troop of Boy Scouts in the shelter, and they all set up their hammocks, and then a flood came this morning. The only smart one was in here with me. <laughs> so it's, it's a little later than I hoped, but I'm getting out of here pretty quickly. So here we are at Chunky Gal Trail. What a name. And there it goes, over the Chunky Gal Mountains. You can hear the wind blowing as the front comes through. All the warm weather from last week is going away. The temperature is going to drop a pretty good bit today and tonight. Well, it's been 90 miles, counting uh, visits to waterfalls and other things that took up some, time, some miles. And I've come from Springer Mountain now, and I see my truck down there in the bottom, so it's got to be Deep Gap. And I sure am glad to be here. So now I've finished the Georgia section and the North Carolina section to Fontana Dam. About 180 miles of hiking. Here's the Deep Gap parking lot, sure enough. And there's the white truck.